Welcome to another video on the HP Prime. Today I'd like to share with you uh, an app that I had been working on that combines essentially two old pieces of software. Um, the equation library from the HP 48 series and a multiple nonlinear system solver named SolveSys that many of you might be familiar with again from the HP 48 days. Um, you can download it here at the Museum of HP Calculators. Uh, once you download it, you can unzip it. And when you unzip it, it'll create a folder named equationlibrary.hpapter, which you would then drag into this content pane in the HP Connectivity Kit. So if it's not visible, you can you know, select the content pane there. Um, just plug in your calculator or your virtual calculator and simply drag and drop okay, into your, your calculator. Uh, it shows the animation in the Mac version is um, not animating properly. It actually did transfer, but for whatever reason, I suppose it's a bug. It didn't actually uh, display that in the animation, but it's there. So let's go ahead and run our equation library and you know you can press the plot key which brings up the category of equations many of you should be familiar with this if you've ever used the equation library on the HP 48 let's go ahead and select um, motion and we'll do linear motion so here are all the formulas related to linear motion if we click view and we can then view all the variables and what they stand for here um, we're not going to work with all of these equations. I'll just select the last two. And pressing the num here. So this version uses, uh, it's the separated version. There are two versions, the merge and a separated. The merge has the SVD program kind of built into it. And I've decided to use the separated version. So um, when you see that message, just basically go back into your SVD program and then open and close it to basically recompile it. Uh, if you if you want to be double sure that uh, it's working properly, um, let's go ahead and clear that out. Just type in restart. Oops. R e s t a r t. And th that deletes all the old cast variables that you know, are just kind of sitting around. So again, recompiling and that should go. So there we go. Everything is, should be working. It selects a linear motion. Again, I only want to work with those two. And we'll enter in our solver with the num key. So let's do just a, I'll just make it an example. Let's do regular gravitational acceleration. Maybe, uh, let's see. We'll, uh, We'll keep our initial position and velocity at zero, and we'll solve for the actual velocity and how long it takes for this to travel um, if we want to travel, say, 100 meters. Okay, so we'll, uh, those are our known values, which we will uh, assign to be constants. And I'm just going to throw in some sort of dummy initial guesses and hit OK. So we found a zero. So this is the, the Newton solver, and we see that. In this column, this is the norm of our system, and here this is the, not really the norm, but the, the relative change in the x values. Uh, and by x, we mean the, the variable, so the input, the generic x, right? So in this case, it's v and t. So uh, it looks like we have a solution with the velocity being 44.27, t being approximately 4.52. This was assumed to be in meters per second. So... Uh, that's really it. That's that's the solver and the equation library. Uh, so it's a like I said, a multiple equation solver, and it's a nonlinear system solver. So it uses a quasi-Newton uh, algorithm, um, quasi because uh, it does um, backtracking line search. Um, just kind of throwing that out there for those who know what I'm talking about, and if you don't, then it's it's not that big of a deal. Uh, nobody really needs to know what the underlying algorithm is unless you're interested in programming uh, system solvers. Um, 
Okay, so uh, another feature of this is you can, so beyond using the built-in systems that um, that are in the equation library, you can of course uh, create your own. Um, let me go over some settings. So these are the numerical settings for tolerances and whatnot. Um, so usually when you switch over to a new system, right, there's there's been work done and you can set it to either discard all those changes or automatically save and then or, or it can you can make it prompt you whether or not you want to save your work before moving on to a new system. Um, so we'll just leave it at that. And uh, here variable mode and no non-use limit. This is the variable mode is normally when you uh, set up a new system of equation. If you use built-in variables, then you don't have to do anything special. You just start using them. But if you do want to create customized variables, then you you either have to create them on the HP Prime, right? Um, or uh, well. There is no or actually. You just have to create them before you can use them. Now, to do so on uh, on this app, you would use this view button, and then you can add and create your variables here. So this allows you to create your variables and give it a description and whatnot. And that description uh, also appears here when you uh, list your variables. But because I selected a new system, there's nothing there. But if we go back, right, so here we can see a description. Which you don't get if you just create it yourself on the, like you would a, a regular variable. Anyway, um, if you want to know more details as, as to how this app handles uh, variables and whatnot, then um, feel free to join the discussion on the forums at the Museum of HP Calculators. Anyway, let's go back to creating a new system. And uh, since I put my variables automatically, then I can use uh, pre-existing variables for my system. So let's do say alpha x plus alpha y equals 4 and then let's create a system that has no solutions. Okay, not over the reals anyway. So when we, when we do an initial guess of 3 and 3 we get a message that says hey this is a local minimum to kind of give you an, a geometric explanation as to what that is. So let me save my my x and y values which happen to be the same quantity in this case. All right, so that was this. So this is a, this was both the x and the y coordinate. And let's go over to the advanced graphing app. And here's the the same system. And if we plot it, you can see that there's clearly no solution. Okay? So the minimum refers to uh, the minimum norm so if we actually go to the location right, that we got from our solver, then there we go. You know, so that's, zoom in, that's the location of the solution. And that's the solution that gives us basically, when we go back, let me go back to the, right, so it's the minimum norm solution, the least square solution uh, to the system. So, uh, it can do things like um, even let's switch over to a complex system. So same equation, but instead of using real valued variables x and y, I'm going to use complex variables z1 and z2. So let's do z1 plus oops, okay, and. So we can enter in real values, and if we enter in 3 and 3, we'll probably get the same minimum solution, okay, which really wasn't a solution. Um, or we could try, let's say, 3 plus i, and i as our guess. And the solver finds a 0. So 2 plus 3, 2 minus 3, and you can check. All right, so z1 plus Z2, and then Z1, oops, Z1 times Z2, okay, gives us 13. So there we are, a, uh, 
a nonlinear system solver. Um, you know, I, I chose really s simple examples, but uh, it could handle more complicated examples than that. So, I uh, hope that you find this useful. And for those of you who are familiar with SolveSys, um, a very similar program has, is now available for the HP Prime. So with that, I think I'll go ahead and end this video. Thank you for watching. I hope that you'll find the, that the app is useful. Please feel free to leave any comments or questions, and I will catch you all next video.